Hello again. Today we start chapter eight on computer system architecture course, central processing unit, CPU. Topics covered in this chapter are general register organization, stack organization, instruction formats, addressing modes, data transfer and manipulation, program control, and reduced instruction set computers. CPU, Central Processing Unit, is the part of the computer that performs the bulk of data processing operations. The CPU is made up of three major parts. The register set to store the intermediate data used during the execution of the instructions. The Arithmetic and Logic Unit, ALU, in which the required macro operations for executing the instructions are performed and the control unit used to supervise the transfer of information among the registers and instructs the ALU as to which operation to perform. In the basic computer used so far, we have only two registers, the accumulator and the data register. Memory locations were needed to store pointers, counters, retain addresses, Temporary results. Referring to memory is time consuming. It's more convenient and more efficient to have several registers in the CPU to store these intermediate values. And you already know when a large number of registers is included in the CPU, it's more efficient to connect them through a common bus. Regarding memory, based on memory usage for programs and data, two architectures are known. The first, non-impeded, and the impeded architecture. The non-impeded uses the stored program concept and known as a Newman machine. Here, both the instructions and data are stored in memory. Examples of this architecture is the desktop or PCs. While in the embedded system, known as Harvard architecture, we have two separate memories. One is for data, and one is for the instructions, called the program memory. Example of such architecture is the signal processor-based system. The user programs the computer in machine or assembly language must be aware of the register set, the memory structure, the type of data supported by the instruction, and the function that each instruction performs. Here's the black diagram of the register set with common arithmetic logic on it. In this structure, we have seven registers. The arithmetic logic unit with two buses connected to it, A bus and B bus. The selection line in each max, select one register or the input data for the bus. The A and B buses form the inputs to a common arithmetic logic unit. The output of the arithmetic logic unit is available to all the registers. A 3 by 8 decoder is used to select one of the registers by enabling its load input. Since we have seven registers and the input, 
we need three bits and select A, three bits and select B, three bits and select D. The control unit directs the information flow through the registers and the arithmetic logic unit by selecting the various components in the system. For example, to perform the operation R1 and R2 and the store result in R3, the control unit must provide binary selection variables to max A selector here, select A, max B selector, select B, arithmetic logic unit operation and destination register decoder destination or select D. In this example, the select A is for R1, the select B for R2, the operation or the operation code is for the AND operation, and the decoder select is for register 3. These four control selection variables are generated in the control unit and must be applied to the proper selection inputs. The selection lines are combined into one word called control word and the size of the control word is 14 bits. Three for the select A, three for the select B, three for the select D and five bits for the operation code. The 14 bit control word specifies a particular micro operation. Here we have the table for encoding of register selection fields. The three bit binary code in the first column specifies the binary code for each of the three fields. Select A, select B, and select D fields. For example, the code for selecting register R2 is 0, 1, 0. Not here, we select A or select B is zero, the corresponding multiplexer selects the external input data. And when select D is zero, no destination register is selected, but the contents of the output bus are available in the external output. And here we have the table for encoding arithmetic logic operations. Transfer, increment, add, sub, decrement, and or XOR, complement, shift right, and shift left. For example, if we have the micro operation R1 and R3, and we want to store the result in R2, select A, in this case, zero zero one for select a select b r three zero one one select d r two zero one zero select a select b select destination and the operation is AND here, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. So this is the control word for this macro operation. And the control word for the macro operation R1 minus R2 and the result in R1 is Select A is R1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Select B2, 
010 destination R1 001 and the operation code subtract here 00101 this is the control word for the macro operation R1 minus R2 and store result in R1 any register can be cleared with an XOR operation since a exclusive or a equals zero for example to clear register r3 select a is three select b is three as well and select d is three and the operation is xor zero one one zero here this is equivalent to R3 exclusive or R3 and result in R3. Here we'll have all zeros in R3. It's apparent from these examples that many other micro operations can be generated in the CPU. The most efficient way to generate control words within a large number of bits is to store them in a memory unit. A memory unit that stores control words is referred to as a control memory. And this type of control is referred to as microprogrammed control, and it was discussed in chapter seven. Our next topic is stack organization. For today, that's all. Thank you.